Welcome back for more fighting Group B as the Gigabyte Marines and Longju get ready for this matchup between the LCK and GPL champions. Hello everyone, I am Julian Patriot Time Car, following the action alongside Andrew Vidias Day and Sam Kirby Hartman Kensler. Hello, gentlemen, we're reunited once again. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> Does feel good to have you both back as we are going to have a look at this next series. And again, Longju, they will secure first place with a win. So you put the standings here of the group. Still surprisingly tight given what happened this morning. Yeah, and if Gigabyte Marines are able to win a game, they will eliminate Fnatic after what was a nail barter of a game against Immortals. Yeah, even with Fnatic just taking down Immortals, uh, Gigabyte Marines could take all the wind out of their sails. Uh, Gigabyte Marines now with a solid game against uh, Immortals themselves. Uh, it would be very interesting uh, as far as their matchup with Longju because previously when they matched up versus Longju, it was they were still trying to do lane swaps and Longju just invaded and got those deep wards to see out the lane swap. But now Gigabyte Marines not really doing the lane swap that much anymore. Yeah, they've brought in uh, that main support in Say, and he seems to be much more focused on focusing in the lane phase, Sia rather, and. They just seem to be so much more confident. We still have the Levi aggression that we saw throughout this tournament and throughout group stages. And I'm hoping that they stick to that style because that seems to be where they're most comfortable. Certainly have seen some surprises as well, of course. Cannot forget Archie with the Ergot pick. He's had a number of unique picks throughout this tournament. But as we get into Champion Select, you never quite know what you're going to get with Gigabyte Marines. And credit to this team for playing standard, now also being a weapon they have. Exactly. And, you know, the Kane is on that list. They even had a Scion banned against them. So there are a lot of different champions uh, floating around here that you have to worry about in Champion Select. Wow. Long going to take out the Ergot <laughs> right away, though. A lot of respect being shown towards Archie. And this Actually, sitting with all the analysts, everyone was like, this pick makes no sense, it does awful into Shen, but Archie, he just found a way to make it work, and he just drew so much pressure that Immortals had no way to deal with it. On the other side, there were a ton of AD carry bans from the Marines. Twitch, Tristana, and Kogma all taken away with, of course, our customary Callista ban also on the other side. So Longshu might pick another one, but we'll see what their last ban is here. Now, Gigabyte Marines did play Ash earlier on in the day, and it feels like with all these hyper carries banned out, they're looking to try and prioritize Look it. at how many priority picks are up, though. I mean, we have all of these supports, plus the Zaya. Uh, there's so many options here if you just want to grab the uh, the Janna her early on as well. Rakan is available, uh, Javan is available, Sejuani is available. Like, many of the s stitch champions that we see consistently banned throughout this tournament have been left available. And Gigabyte Marines are going for the strategy. If all the OPs are open, you can't pick all of them. Well, that's what happens when you're playing against the Gigabyte Marines, and they draw these specific bands, the Urgot and the Kane. They're not on that list, so that makes way for a lot of the very priority champions. Here we go, though. Galio has been instrumental in a lot of the really exciting Gigabyte Marines games because of the mobility. Also because of the effectiveness of the champion on fairly low amounts of gold. He gets a lot of tanky stats pretty early on, so we'll see how well they can use it this time. And there's no guarantee that it'll be in the mid lane either because the last time Gigabyte Marines did bring out the Galio was in the top from Archie, where they actually had that successful lane. There's spot. no guarantee he'll even be in a lane. He'll be <laughs> jungling for the first three minutes straight. Five camp leash. That was the most memorable Galio game from the Marines as Syndra rounds out their first three picks. We did see Rakan and Javan from Longju very much expected and looks like they're sticking to taking strong picks here with Varus being the consideration. Now the thing is with Gigabyte Marines banning away so many hyper carries is just forcing Longju into playing a style that they're actually very comfortable with, which is high pace, high aggression, looking to get a lot of early lane leads, largely either through their individual members or through the facilitation of Kuz and Khan. And I feel like the Gigabyte Marines trying to ban away this late game scaling playstyle is not going to affect Longju much in terms of how they love to play. And on the Longju side, banning Nocturne as we move into Phase 2 is uh, great to see again, continuing the respect and not letting Marines run some of their more unorthodox strategies that they've shown off here at Worlds. Can you ever really <laughs> ban out the Gigabyte Marines, no, though? No, I don't I, think so. <laughs> I feel like their champion pools are extremely deep. I'm excited to see what Levi has left up his sleeve. Just gotta throw all your darts up at the board and see if you hit what they wanted to use in this game. Uh, Longju actually not, uh, not too unhappy about the way this draft is going. Going, though, sure. They have such good engage, and one of the biggest things for this team, uh, when you talk to Gorilla, he he loves initiating, he loves creating plays for the team, so he was a bit sad about Art and Sensor meta, right? Well, now he gets both! Rakan is the premier champion because you can build the Art and Sensor, you can have those great engages, and this to me looks very scary for the Gigamite Marines to have to play into. That being said, Galio is great for counter initiation, you know, counter engage. 
and we'll see if they can make it happen. Now they will take both the Galio and the Talia away from BDD, but he still has options like the Rise if he wants to, which we've seen being very prevalent. Sejuani Rise would not be a bad round out for Longju. It gives them plenty of engage, they have scaling options, they have early game as well, and it's considered arguably one of the most meta and the options that have left, probably the strongest comp you could build uh, given the current state of the game. And remember, last time we saw this uh, matchup with the Gigabyte Marines, Optimus uh, got a huge CS lead over Poe Belter, playing the Syndra into the rise. BDD definitely going to be a, a much different opponent here, but we'll see about the early jungle intervention in that lane. I mean, what else would it be at this point? This Gigabyte Marine, Sion. Do you have Sion to round the up only the last thing. few picks? Oh, <laughs> Rengar! So Levi going to do Levi things. Uh, Rengar got... Oh my oh, god, he's a <laughs> As soon as you want to jump on the first uh, pick there for Gigabytes, there's still a curveball right after it as well. Now you're going to be able to revive the Rengar. So just theorizing how this is going to look, Rengar goes in, Galio ult on top of him, Zillion ult now on the Rengar that might die even through the damage reduction. You know, that would be the most basic one. Uh, but I think that it's going to be a bit more chaotic than that as they try and run around the map very early on. This champion select looks like a game where you would want to get early towers down if you're the Gigabyte Marines. So I think that Longju 100% should go for those level one deep wards to scout out if there's a possible lane swap uh, and try and put a stop to that shenanigans very early on. I'm a little concerned about this bottom lane for the Gigabyte Marines. Zillion, very squishy, <laughs> low mobility going up against the Rakan. You don't have to think far back to remember the last time we saw Rakan playing up against the bottom lane of Gigabyte Marines that in fairness did not have a flash, but going up against the Zillion can still be very easy for a Varus Rakan to build those kind of same snowballs. Well, we'll have to see as the last pick for Longju was Gragas, just again, kind of continue the trend of Khan playing Javan in the top lane. You mentioned that he could have taken something like Sed. Longju are a team that have been playing a lot of carry top laners, of course, particularly Javan for Khan instead of in the jungle. I am so excited to see the early jungle start here for this Rangar. It was recently gave him three armor back, and people love to jump on those memes, but it was significant in helping him with the clear. A lot more healthy, and you actually have more options now in the early clears, whereas before, uh, fairly limited. And he took that three armor from the Gragas. This is the perfect <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> so the difference is six now. He's going <laughs> to crush him. <laughs> Easy stuff. Well, Gigabyte Marines. Always have a surprise again. Their play has been coming more consistent. These are talented players, and they have just been playing straight up good League of Legends in standard lanes. But there's always something spicy, and today it's support zillion. Yeah, and we gotta try and throw out all of our you know options and theorizing here for Gigabyte Marines before the game starts, because once it does, you don't have much time. Uh, but <laughs> we could say, you know, Rengar could be played in a similar way to Nocturne early on, where they try and rush him to that level six. Could be. And in a lot of ways, Rengar is a slightly more safe version of Nocturne, because once you activate the ult, you actually get a, a lot of time to choose and, and reposition yourself before committing to go in, uh, as well as being able to break CC can be extremely important when you're up against something like a Ryze, like a Varus, uh, that could lock you down. And I also think it was extremely crucial for Gigabyte Marines to ban away mobility AD carries too, things like the Tristana, because a low mobility AD carry is super easy to shut down on champions like the Rengar. Now, we have to talk about the level one because it seems like both teams are up for a bit of shenanigans. Scout it out here. Gigabyte Marines have all of the intelligence. All right, now they're trying to bait with the Galio, but they're split up. Let's see what they do here, Archie. No taunt, just takes the Q and pokes them off it. Looks like Longju is happy to roam through, probably get some vision down, and Gigabyte Marines are actually going to give control of the jungle away. This can't spot the rest of them out in the next brush with a flag. Now, typically on a Jarvan, you want to take the Q in the early levels, but I think it was smart here from Khan just to make sure the team doesn't face check. Longju showing respect once again to the Gigabyte Marines, getting this very deep vision down to identify the possible lane swap, and Longju are very well and ready for it. Doesn't quite get the reset in time for that ward, but Giga, or Longju, this is why we really emphasize getting these deep wards. Look what they're actually still doing here for the Gigabyte Marines. Waiting around, they don't want to pop into vision anytime soon. And uh, it looks like they want to chase Longju off of this red. Well, it's going to have to because it looks like a swap maybe started here. Scavenger, you get invaded. Gorilla knocks one up. And that can be first blood later. Oh no, in trouble. And first blood. Oh, 
over to Prey. Long do they stick around in Gigabyte Marine's jungle. They lit this entire half of the map up with wards, and they were able to get a very quick kill onto Levi, shutting down that very early level six that he may have tried to go for. Archie was going to wait there for a little bit of a steal, but Cuz still has the smite, uses it down there on the red. And man, is Gorilla happy to have his hands on some playmaking here. Immediately flashes in there with the Rakan, able to get the knock up, stole away a couple of the small Raptors as well. So even adding more insult to injury there. So now we're going to see how valuable that plus three armor is as Rengar, he's not going to get any leash. He's going to be forced to actually invade onto the top side of Longju's jungle and start to get his jungle clear underway. And this is something with Levi, why so many people love this guy, right? He, he just, he's so aggressive and he immediately goes back to try and take something away from Longju because his red quadrant was pilfer here. It was completely pillaged. There's nothing left except for the Krugs. And so he's trying to get the Raptor start even though his Raptors were pretty much all taken away. And the, the crucial thing here is the Gigabyte Marines thought that that one ward on the red buff would be enough to spot out Longju, but they committed to the Raptors. They were already in that small isolated area, and Longju stacked their CC well enough to be able to prevent Levi from flashing away. Now we have Cuz on the bottom side here, looking to try and target that duo lane, but this is actually giving Levi more time to actually trade red quadrants, and he's gonna get the buff as well. You know, We've been talking so much about Levi that we haven't even touched on the fact that there's a Galio AD carry in the bottom lane with the Zinian. It makes sense in the sense that he has plenty of wave clear, especially with the Zinian. But in terms of lane pressure, you have practically none, and they could be looking for a dive. Yeah, and that means there's no top lane teleport because the top lane is already down here. So here comes the Longshu squad. Khan coming in, knock up, misses those. Archie does get a great top there. Oh, the Gorilla and Cut Prey. Busy taking the turret. It's done from Seer. Could seal another Gorilla. Dancing back for a few shields as Prey is trying to seal a kill, but Archie. Still chasing down. That dive did not work. No, it did not. Long as you take a lot of return damage there, thanks to the turret and Archie landing a very good taunt. And for some reason, Khan, he ended up canceling his TP. Round we didn't two? see what happened in the top side of the map, but I'm sure we'll get a replay because he's coming once again for the dive. Still no help coming. The Gigabyte Marines are going to have to try and keep him off. Sia trying to dodge the damage, but he does eat the Q. Levels up, though. Needs a bit of extra help, pumps a bomb on himself. He's trying <laughs> so hard to move them out of the way. And Longshu you're gonna have to wait another wave. Yeah, uh, Prey still has his flash. So if you're thinking about how you want to pull that dive up, this is one of the few times where you'd want the AD carry to start off with the aggro, use his heal, and then be able to flash out later. But they don't pull it off. Longshu kind of tempting fate right there, but don't pull the trigger. Oh my word. And crucially, like, you'd think, okay, this is actually really bad for RG because he's not able to get any farm, but Khan is actually only 3 CS above him. You could argue that, okay, he's getting solo experience, and that's valuable, but so is no way. He's under no threat because he knows the jungler is bot. Well, talking about experience, because Khan spent so much time down on the bottom side, Levi is well ahead of Cuz. Level up here on the Rengar, and he's just trying to get to that level 6 point that we talk about when you're creating all these skirmishes. Rengar loves to feed on that type of game. You do get bonus attack damage still when you get these individual kills on each member so he wants to spread out his kills get the the varied uh teeth there pretty early on and long have effectively conceded saying all right fine we trust you because we're going to send out to a lane up towards that top side you can see in the replay levi did poke his head and try and get some damage done but 2v1 with an 80 carry not too much he can do there so now long trying to return the game to normality they've sent their bottom lane back up top they're gonna force no way back from this free farm lane while Sire is looking for a bit of a roam in the mid. Levi also invading as per usual. BDD here though to try and cut him off. Yep, Levi with the two level lead over Cuz. If he could have counter jungled those Raptors, it would have been huge because he cleared out the Raptors. So when they respawn, you get that average, average level of the game. Now Cuz actually gets to take advantage of comeback experience, which a lot of people kind of attribute all the time to any time a jungler catches up. But that was one specific moment where the effects were actually seen. That was a second spawn Raptors that he did have the timer for, but really good defense there from the mid as well. BDD gonna protect Cuz and let him get back in the game. And Gigabyte Marine sticking to the dual lane for this game. No way going back down in his 1v1 versus Khan. We've actually rejoined Galio and Zillion in the 2v2. So No way looking pretty good here with an early Warhammer. And yes, Khan, he's getting a decent amount of farm. But Levi might try something here. Spotted on a ward, though. Yep, level five. And you can see with the movement here, Khan is just trying to delay Rangar and waste some of Rangar's time. He knows fully well that he's going to be in this bush. Will he be able to dodge this snare, though? So there's another one. Can't dodge that route. Damage actually pretty good from Levi as the follow-up Q misses from J4. 
Unfortunately for Noe, there was a big wave that he wanted to make sure that he soaked up, got all the farm, got the gold. But Levi, he is sticking around. Is he going to be able to get... There's the re jump, and now the snare actually does land, but top lane action. Torn up from Archie, it's 3v2 again, as Sia going to try and protect his Galio flash is nice. Archie gets away. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, Khan did not have to use his flash to get out, and Optimus was coming over to try and dive him here, but he backs off, and Longshu are going to pay enough respect to save the top laner's life. Now we're in the race for first turret bonus. The teleport will come through from Khan, though, to make sure that the tower stays alive. Keep your eyes on your mini map because Kuz, he's still in the top side, dropping a bit of deep vision, and Rise is on the way. Level 7, they're looking for a dive up top. Keep in mind that Archie still has his teleport, but he's already up here at the top side. BDD coming as well, knock up landing on Tessia. Another great top fight, too. Flash Body Sand's gonna get a few knocks on Tessia. Trying to get out as BDD eventually gets the kill. Archie, awfully low. Sia, don't kill Gorilla, but Galio goes down. Gorilla collects it all. Now they've got the mid lane pushing there with Optimus, but he's not going to be able to get anything done. And it looks like Longju are going to have some more time to push the wave in. And this time round, Longju successfully get the dive, but it is not for free. They lose one member, and Gigabyte Marines are looking to answer. Yep, round number two. Maybe make it the second there. TP also in Khan is nowhere good to run. They're going to try and ult flash out. Does get a good amount of distance away. Flash Whoa. all over from Optimus. He wants to seal the kill. Takes down Khan. Optimus gets himself hit. His first kill of the game, he had a fantastic performance earlier on in the day, and now Gigabyte Marines have their eyes on the first turret. Yeah, so in the end, Gigabyte Marines might stick around for this first turret bonus. Levi does get chased off of the blue, though. He's level 6, Gorilla looking for the knockup, doesn't quite land it, but BDD flash snares in, does not connect it as the flash gets Rengar out to safety, and Gigabyte Marines collect the first turret gold. Yeah, Levi there, holding strong, doesn't even uh, blow his flash early, waits until BDD commits his, so in the end, it's a good trade, and this is a post-level six Rengar. So remember, Rise is definitely a vulnerable target now that he doesn't have his flash, even though it's used offensively. But look at this dive. Note here that Longju, their focus was purely on Tessaia. They just wanted to kill the squishy Zillion. He wasn't level six yet. They didn't want to buy any more time to help him get that level up. And that meant that with him already dead, with four members still alive, they could turn their attention back onto Archie. They lost Gorilla in the exchange, but the fact that Gigabyte Marines got the kill on the bot side meant that it actually went in their favor. And let's draw it back and calm down a little bit to try and explain why Gigabyte Marines keep going for these strategies. It's because they've talked about, we're not not gonna you know go even in CS and straight up standard lanes with people if we go toe to toe you know Archie versus uh, Khan like of course they're gonna have a deficit but if you look across now he's barely behind even with all this focus because of the lopsided matchups that they're getting here and they've actually been able to come out ahead in objectives with the rush towards the first turret bonus that all being said though if Longju can catch up here and get some of that standing gold in the turrets they will regain that gold lead plus they're also on the Drake now uh, but that's kind of the reason why Green Fire Marines often go for these strategies. What I find so impressive is how even though Long Jew seem to be expecting, predicting, playing around the lane swap, and even though the early game went not as Gigabyte Marines had planned, they're just so quick to come up with the next move. They're just always on the ball. They're always finding the next option available to them and immediately playing towards it. Again, if I was Levi, I definitely think he'd be looking for the rise because there's no armor at all on BDD, just with mana and magic resistance at the moment. Uh, and they definitely could try and uh, get some stacks of him, but that's not going to be the case. He's looking topside. Here comes Optimus as well. Two-man roam. A lot of patience here to try and set this up. Over the top, Gorilla could be the target. Ulti does find him, but now the diving coming, but it looks like things no way. He's going to start things off. Gorilla gets quickness back around. going to try and save himself, but the damage from the ult is too much. Levi grabs one. BDD here up to save his teammates with the Feather Storm. Not enough for Khan. Yeah, and they're also having Cuz rotate over, but the kill has already been taken. If Gigabyte Marines back off here and reset, then they're going to be just fine. And this is just so different to when the la last time these two teams met. Gigabyte Marines got absolutely crushed in the early game by Longju. They challenged Longju once again by forcing them into this early game style, and Gigabyte Marines are the ones currently in the gold lead. Well, looking good so far as Khan tries to defend that turret. Archie and Sia still pushing it away. This Galio again has lots of access to other sections of the map with the ultimate. Gamma again just pushing their vision forward and trying to look for that next target which should convert into their next objective. All right, let's take another look here. The double room comes up, Blast Stone over the wall to start it out. And as soon as they start this, they know we have to finish this kill very quickly because Longshu will be coming up. Optimus got a good knockback there. He completely denies the Rakan engaged. And, and he's the whole reason really that that play was able to get pulled off. If Gorilla gets double charms right there, then they bought a lot more time. 
Well, it doesn't grab it in the end as Gorilla does go down. But again, everything just kind of going smoothly here for Gam. Really creative lane swap, great abuse of some early experience as well to get a lot of level leads for particularly the jungler and the AD carry. And as far as strong performing players from this team has been, it has been those two. So you can kind of understand why they're giving them an advantage. And on a pretty even playing field, looking good here for the first 12 minutes. Oh, it's certainly looking good. And it's going to look even better as Gigabyte Marines now start to complete a couple of items. They reach those level spikes. Rengar is level eight, and he's got his eyes on BDD, who has no flash right now. Yeah, he's got a little bit more time left on that summoner spell for it to pull off. I'm also curious what build he's going to go with, because I would assume that he's going to go with the Duskblade build and, and get you that you know, so, burst yeah. damage. But we have seen in competitive when they want to trend more towards the safer side. It, it is the Black Cleaver, and you get your cooldown reduction, and you do get more health that way. But, but it's Levi. First, Levi though, it's Shadow Assassin Kane. You're definitely <laughs> feeling the Duskblade. I'm hoping for the Duskblade, that's for sure, as Archie and Khan finally landing against each other, although I think Sayo was still around. So not really a fair fight so far. But again, Archie keeping up nicely on CS despite the early lane assignments. And with nothing really up right now, Rift Herald maybe, but still pretty early in the next track. Not up for a number of minutes. Both teams just trying to retake control of the center of the map. And if Longju want to try and force this Rift Herald, I feel the Gigabyte Marines would be more than happy to fight for it. Optimus level 10 almost completed his Morel and Omicron. Noe and Saya are on the top side of the map and they have a Galio that can either TP in or ulti in if he walks that way. You can see he's got a big window after just pushing up the bot wave and is now making his way up mid. Rengar speed boost right here, but the Longju squad are giving enough respect to that collapse. I think that was actually due to them seeing Optimus roam up rather than them actually having any uh, you know, early vision on the Rengar or Zillion combination, which it can sometimes catch people off guard. You can run straight past wards. It doesn't matter if you're sped up fast enough that you can close the distance anyway. Yeah, I think you're right. Some great left side vision of mid there for Longju, just trying to make sure Optimus can't pressure the side of the map that Gamma trying to likely take the next turret in, given that Archie is just kind of hanging out and farming up against Khan. Infernal Drake, though, will be spawning in a minute 50. So if there was ever a big objective to start a team fight over, that certainly springs to mind. I can't wait for these team fights to start, but I'm expecting more skirmishing from the side of Gigabyte Marines. I feel like 5v5, they're still pretty decent, but they have a lot of single target damage with the Rengar, the Syndra, and naturally with an AD carry like Zaya, you're looking to just kind of kill one target at a time. And typically that's the front line. Oh, when you look at the lineup of Longshu, they actually don't have that much of a front line. Yes, Kaz, he's going to be very tanky on the Gragas, but Khan, he's not going to be building tanky. Uh, BDD, he'll get slightly tanky later on once he's got the Zonyas, but there are a lot of squishy members, and Levi, he kind of has the pick of the litter. I like this from Levi, though, hanging out in the lane, just trying to bait the duo lane of Longju in. So they might take it as well. No way, just moving up a little further forward. Longju have to be very careful. That route, though, does miss. Look at how different of a story this game is already compared to the first time that they matched up. 5.8 thousand gold was the previous game. And this time around, Levi is sitting on a ward, so I don't know if uh, they're actually going to try anything. People are running us! Oh, they ultied up. Actually, going to try and knock him back in with a zillion ulti. He's going to keep Levi alive. Longji, though, TPing everybody in, and Levi left out to dry. Can't make it out as BDD roots him, and now Khan looking for the Cataclysm. Who's he going to find? Jumps in, finds a couple Featherstone flash out, but Saya is trapped in the mix and goes down to Kaz. Little bit of vision goes a long way, boys, as Longji are able to call that play early on and then surprise him with the Varus ultimate in the brush. Bad time to die as well. Infernal Drake up in 20 seconds. The jungle are dead for about five more. So Longju will see where they go next, but really nice counterplay there to stop that gank in top lane. You have to praise BDD and Cuz for them maneuvering through the area of the map that Gigabyte Marines had no vision of. They thought they were safe. They thought that they could wait for Prey and Gorilla to overstep, but it was they who ended up getting punished. And it's Longju that reclaimed the kill's lead. Gigabyte Marines are going to have to give up that Infernal Drake, but they do at least get another turret back for themselves and get some more money in their pockets. Longju will be happy to get this uh, scaling percentage increase, though, to their damage. Rewarded for their tenacity in the top lane as they stick around, but a trade, like you mentioned, Levi, though, just waiting a little too long. So you can just see the vision on your mini-map. 
there was not enough from the side of Gigabyte Marines to spot the move up. You'd expect Optimus to communicate, hey, people are missing, but with the Rise ulti, the enemy team can get there much faster than you initially expect. And with Seiya, unfortunately, flashing just a little bit too late. But I believe, actually, the ulti was used onto Noe, so he flashed into the Javan ultimate anyway, and he ended up giving up his life, and two kills went over to Longju. Yeah, nice move there from Khan to get some summoner spells out, and the extra kill as well. Still very close game though here, and Gigabyte Marines are still capable of fighting in a lot of these skirmishes with Longju. Remember the mobility point we keep on bringing up. Levi plus Archie can show up and surprise people. Well, again, Gold Lead's still there The Gigabyte Marines. A lot of it is just sitting in that two turret of Van, and so Longju, right now, it's good that they're defending well, but until they open up the map a little bit more, if Gigabyte Marines can still push the game forward into the mid game, they can actually snowball pretty effectively. I feel like that once that mid tower goes down for the Gigabyte Marines, then with the map much more open, as you rightly said, it becomes much easier to force these picks. And also, something we haven't mentioned yet is the fact that Zillion is a great facilitator for starting these engages onto a Rengar as well. The bonus movement speed as Archie's now getting collapsed on. Looks like he's in trouble. Justice punches away. BDD ready with a flash, but there's the quickness from Gorilla into the knockup, and Khan grabs a freebie. Longshu taking initiative for themselves. Get that Galio off of the field early here, and they might actually be able to transition some of their vision into a less defensive vision that we're seeing into a more deep and offensive vision to try and see these Gigabyte Marines plays a little bit earlier. If you can see what side of the map the Rengar is going to, then you're, you can set up those counter engages so much easier. We've also got to give a bit of criticism there towards Archie. The reason why he's one of the highest, he has one of the highest number of solo decks in the world's group stages is because he makes these overextended plays like this. He didn't have the support of his team. They weren't applying pressure anywhere else, and he ends up getting punished. There's some of that deeper vision, though, already starting to pay dividends for Longview. They've seen this setup from the Gigabyte Marines. Gorilla actually tips their hat right there, letting him know you are not uh, going to pull any surprises right now. That's a subtle thing, but the man you just mentioned, Gorilla, has to be praised for some of the most creative ward placements of any support player. So obviously a team effort to get the vision out, but you can kind of see that mastermind behind a lot of this vision from Longju, which, to their credit, is probably the reason the game is still this close. I mean, it's also the fact that Longju is a really good team. Right? Yeah, they are very good. <laughs> uh, I mean, in terms of the farm, they've done extremely well given the circumstances. Khan has done a great job of catching back up. In terms of CS, in fact, taking a pretty significant lead and now even being two levels over Archie as well. So coming into these team fights, Khan is going to offer a lot more value depending on who's that one initiating uh, the start of the fight. Yeah, I actually would like to see a little bit more proactive and maybe even more risky uh, play here from Gram uh, Gam to actually start using the Rengar and Galio combination. Right now, though, you can see Longshu aren't giving a lot of openings. They have control wards around mid. They rotated the Varus into mid who can wave clear and protect that turret. That all-important mid turret you talked about, Vedius, uh, still stands for Longju, and that's where they can kind of mount their defense from and fend off a lot of these plays. And you can see they've kept Rise fairly far back in the bottom lane as well. He doesn't need that vision investment because Longju have decided to put it towards top side to make sure that Khan can overextend towards the top. So every single Longju member feeling very comfortable right now. They're not afraid of the risk of Levi looking for those pick. And again, it comes back to that deep vision you were talking a lot about, Kubi, making sure that Longju can always see where Levi is looking to try and make a play. And I feel like Longju basically he just put a big foot on the brake and they said, all right, it was a fun first 10 minutes of the game. We're going to slow things right back down and we're going to stick to the style that we know works for us. Well, we'll see when round two is due here for these two teams. Infernal back up in yet another minute 50 and Black Cleaver was the first purchase there from Levi, I guess, after the Warriors. So not full dust play just yet. Maybe didn't get enough kills for that. But again, you can see them mounting towards one and two items and that likely means a big fight's due to break out. Yeah, it's a very sensible build. Uh, cooldown reduction is one of the best stats there for Rengar. You can... Uh, get off your empowered abilities that much quicker since you get to burn your normal ones. Really gives him all the stats you're kind of looking for early on, but now you have to wonder, are they going to have enough damage to assassinate Prey or assassinate BDD, uh, who actually has not gotten a zone as yet? Look at the minimap, because you can see that Optimus is topside. As long as you know this, and they're sending Khan towards the bot, even though there's a big wave pushing towards topside, as long as you wanted to try and make a play, maybe even a dive onto Archie, but he respected it. He knew that if he played defensively, along with Levi making his way down bot as well, that dive would fall apart. So now it's Gam that are in a position to try and make a play happen as long as you go back. 
back and react to all these pushing waves of his. That's right, they've been able to prep the waves, but as soon as they prep all these waves, Longju kind of retreating right now, multiple recalls going off, uh, really just not giving any openings, as you said, to the Gigabyte Marines to try and accelerate this one. Because Longju are very happy right now with their double Drake advantage uh, to kind of sit on this one until uh, they're ready for Gorilla to make that engage. Well, it seems like, again, some of those shots have gone in for both sides. You can see two items on both the AD carries right now and 25 seconds so that Drake is up for the taking. Longju could extend to a three Drake advantage, but it's been a very dynamic last few minutes of both teams just trying to get the siders in the right positions and move their lane assignments around to try and get an edge on the map. And as expected, Longju is a little bit better at that, but one fight could change a lot. Yep, thankfully it is an Infernal Drake, so that might actually spawn some more fighting here. We've got a little bit of an attempt for deeper vision from Longju, but immediately cleared out there by Archie. And Gigabyte Marines are moving in. In a pretty good spot as well to try and make something happen. Archie in the front lines, ready, can't walk down, immediately walked over, Tone lands into the stun onto Kaza, now Archie straight back into the middle now, maybe a 1v5, oh. if nobody wanted to be the Zillion on, does keep him alive for a little bit longer, Ringar gonna try and dive it in, Gorilla tries to find the take, but doesn't grab it, Khan gets a great ulti down to trap him in his Gorilla, will die over to Optimus, no way, still fighting in onto Bray, but a dance around the pedestal for Bray, gets him out, no way though, took down Khan, King of Marines is beating him, Defeating Longju in a mid-game fight, and they're in a position to actually go towards the Baron. Yeah, they're giving up that Infernal Drake, and they want the Baron instead. Cuz is going to take that Inferno, and they'll have the, the stacking buff for later. But Gigabyte, they're not worried about later. They want to go right now. These guys are looking so amazing right now. If they get this Baron, that'll be the first Baron that's ever been taken against Longju and Gigabyte Marines. They're going to secure it. That's it. The Baron goes over. Longju say, we cannot contest. They'll take their consolation prize, what we talked about. Game opening objectives, Baron is the biggest. Take another look at how this started out, because even though it looks like it's not the best for Gigabyte Marines, because Archie goes in there without any support, they have the Zillion ult to rely upon to sort of reset. You get the Rengar ultimate from bottom side, Optimus comes up, and Archie's able to kite back into the rest of the team for a while here, while Gorilla just gets completely popped. And then Archie still got off uh, the zoning ultimate there from Galio, which makes them back off. Levi able to get into the backside there with the Rengar and find the kill on BDD. And initially, this looked horrible for the Gigabyte Marines. The fact that Archie goes in alone, he's by himself, you think, you don't even have your mid laner and jungle in nearby. There's no reason to force this fight. But with good positioning, good flanking from Levi, and enough stalling from Archie actually allows Gigabyte Marines to turn that fight around. And then count the cooldowns that are used on a almost zero DPS target there. You know, the Galio is not going to put out much offense. And even though you don't want to have to start out your fight by using your Zillion ultimate like that, they were able to get a decent amount out of Longju in exchange for that uh, and able to turn the fight around because of it. Let's see, though. Baron buff is on. They took down the outer mid turret, but can the Gigabyte Marines actually make this trade worth it and get a get some more territory for themselves because you do still have to worry about the stacking power of infernal drakes speaking of there's another infernal drake on the way there's just something about group b today kobe <laughs> we've had so many infernal drakes spawn but gigabyte marines still with two and a half minutes left to play with as they try and get this Baron in power, needs to shove down these tier two turrets. The thing you can always be confident when it comes to the Gigabyte Marines, so is once they have a lead, they are so effective at pushing it. They are not afraid to make plays, and regardless of who their opposition is, they feel confident. With this Baron buff, they're grouping up towards mid and bot, and they're looking to take down some of these early tier two. Longju might actually go for the engage. Double taunt finds them as Levi is barely not getting caught by Kaza. Good old back in, but now Gorilla finds a quickness to the gamma here. Oh, the Electra rip from Cinder, but Optimus wants to cleanse out of the way. Silly and all. Does save his life as Archie. Still taking in the front lines. No way. Going off in the fight. And Saya takes down Khan. Again, they engage on the Galio, but Longju are going down. And Gigabyte Marines are in there. Khan is dead. Archie usually off for a little bit of extra flare, and this time dead. The Gigabyte Marines looking so confident. We were just talking about how they are not afraid to force these plays. They are not afraid of who they're going up against. And they just take down their first tier two of the game. They engage on the tankiest two members. And Gorilla uses the Rakan combo on, on no 
threatening members. The biggest part about Rakan is that you surprise the backline, you surprise their the enemy DPS, but they go in here, he gets the charm onto Rengar and Galio, and that's about it. They do hit a good Varus ultimate there to snare Optimus, but that one is remedied by the Zillion ultimate. And after that, Gigabyte Marines full throttle forward. And we talked about how there are a lot of squishy members on the side of Longju. This means that every time someone like Khan or Gorilla goes in, no way just has the freedom to just chunk them down. And even if someone like Levi or Archie gets super low or ends up dying, you have Sire's ultimate to just bring them back to life. And Longju are struggling as a level 15 Zaya 106 is just melting through the front line of Longju. And we think about great domestic players from Vietnam, players like SOFM, like Levi, instantly jump to mind. But no way, he is the next as far as players from that region go. And he is having the game of his life. And in, in the early game, Gigabyte Marines played all around him. There the ones that kept sending him off into his side lane. They funneled all the gold and experience onto him. Archie, he suffered, he struggled, but now he's doing his job on the Galio. No way is stepping up. And the Gigabyte Marines, they have a 4,000 gold lead over Longju. Infinity Edge also working in for the heady carry we just mentioned as Gigabyte Marines do have to slow things down a touch. Baron Buff is about to wear off on everyone. So we'll have to look again to the third Infernal in this game to break open the next fight. And one of the biggest things is going to be the setup for this Infernal Drake. The other thing that Gigabyte Marines got out of this Baron, it was more than just this turret. It's all this vision that they put in the blue quadrant because that is what's going to lead up to this Infernal Drake. Now, that's why Longshore are putting such a high priority on clearing out all of the vision well in advance of the dragon spawn because they don't want to fall prey to one of these engagements, one of those pinches from the Gigabyte Marines combo within jungle corridors. But you talk about vision, just look at the controls being stacked up by the Gigabyte Marines, while Longju just invested all their vision into clearing their half of the map out. It is the Marines that still have the tempo advantage. They're the ones that are better set up across the map right now, so that if Longju even clear out this vision, they have to go back, reset, and Gigabyte can instantly come in and set up vision once more. Again, though, it's the placement of where is that vision. If the Infernal Drake is going to be the site of the next fight, that's what matters. Here right now, we have a Scuttle Crab as well that is going to time out pretty soon for the Gigabyte Marines. They might want to go set up a little bit quicker. Also remember the stakes of this game because Fnatic got a pretty impressive clutch win against the Mortals earlier in the day. But if Gigabyte Marines win here, that knocks Fnatic out. They cannot make it out of the group stages. And this will be the first team to actually take down Longju. And then Gigabyte Marines, they only have to beat Fnatic. And there's a possibility they could get first in the group. Gigabyte Marines are definitely the real deal. Vietnam is here to play, and they are winning as well. I mean, look, 20 seconds about to that next Infernal spawns. A minute after that, Baron will be back up. And look at the carries from Gigabyte Marines. Three items and counting for Noah, who just finished his Infinity Edge, and a Void Staff just completed a minute ago for Optimus. If Gav want a fight, they are ready to win one. So looking at the DPS pastry time, Prey has built a frozen ballot here. <laughs> if you're trying to evaluate the DPS output of these guys, Gigabyte Marines have a very good chance of contesting this. Right now, the Longju are trying to burst down the Drake. Longju, this is very dangerous. Look at Levi, look at Levi. What a TP from Archie! He's gonna go in for a try and look for a top. He finds three. Sam, four that stuff from the ceiling, and they're going. Galio in. There's the dragon, goes down to no way. And Gav's still trying to find the fight. Gorilla goes down again to Optimus. And now Khan flashing in for the ult. Onto Archie's gonna keep him alive. No way. Still letting rip. Oh my god, the damage. King of my Marines. They win the team fight. It's gonna be an ace. They absolutely destroy. Launch you. The CK going down! Gigabyte Marines, they have four members alive. They have a mid minion wave and they're looking for the base. 30 seconds death time as the crowd is going wild as the Gigabyte Marines are smashing long to. Who it needs, Baron? Gigabyte Marines just thrust through mid and take down a turret. They will back away, however, and keep the game a little bit more extended. They're going to be able to pick up this Baron, no problem. The death timers are well long enough after that ace. So much 
of what we were talking about, Kobe, was about making sure that your half of the map was clear of wards. Then we see that one ward be the pivotal flank for Gigabyte Marines to get a huge multi-man ward off from Archie. And again, we're seeing the struggles of Longchu of getting through the front line. Optimus isn't killed until the very end of the fight. No way is just free to deal all this damage. And then Levi's just causing chaos on the back line. This composition is just so Gigabyte Marines, and they are making it work beautifully. And you know what the best part about this comp from the Gigabyte Marines is? They said, damn that Arden sensor. We still aren't going to pick up one. See, has got the extra one, and it has the redemption for heal for everybody as well. He can still apply it. Locket as well, I think, also on the way. So a lot of tools still to work with, but these Zillion Ultimates have been so fight-changing all game long. And now Gigabyte Marines are rapidly approaching 10,000 gold ahead of Longju with three minutes of Baron Buff to try and push this game to one final play. Whoa. We need to slow down, gents. Gigabyte Marines, they are well, looking impressive. Longju is definitely saying that right now. <laughs> They're like, whoa, guys. But the thing is, when you look at their ability to scale, they got put onto this Varus. Varus, in the late game, is not going to be able to match up against the Zaya. There's already a two-level difference. You talked about the Frozen Mallet. And short rise could be that late game threat. But Optimus, he's also like overfed. He's so strong on this Syndra. And what are you going to do about Levi always jumping on top of Prey in every single fight? And Rakan, he just can't kill this effect. Well, again, Gigabyte Marines trying to break down these inhibitors, or at least their turrets. That's kind of the next big piece for them if they can manage it with this Baron buff. But again, playing calmly, just moving around the map. Archie is going to get beat on by BDD. And that's actually everybody coming in. All right, well, actually, how much time can you buy? Quite a lot, although he does go down BDD. He grabs the kill. So, Gigabyte Marines should be able to get the top turret from this, but they have a lot of DPS around mid inhibitor turret as well. They're going to rush it. Looks like they should be able to take it. Good stun as well from Optimus. Protects the disengage. So that's going to be two turrets in exchange for the life of Archie, their top laner, their sacrifice. Definitely going to be worrying here for Longju as they're running out of territory. Zero, three, and ten on Archie, but it feels like every single death has been well worth it there for the top laner. And now we talked about needing a place to attack. Mid inhibitor is open, and Gam still had Baron Buff for a very long time. So now. Vision starts to be one of the important parts of the game again because Gigabyte Marines, they want to make sure they have control over Longju's half of the map. Or oh, maybe they just want more kills. Oh, Khan hit the recall button. It looks like he's absolutely out of time. The stun lands in after the ultimate and Noe. He's just going to do the rest of the dirty work. Noe picks up another kill. Khan falls down. He had no flash to get out. That's 50 seconds. We talked about how Vision was going to be important. They needed it there because now Gigabyte Marines are in a good place to take down that inhib. Exactly. That's the advantage of Gigabyte Marines in this game right now. Because they have extra vision, because they have extra pressure, when their top laner goes down, they've got two pushing waves. They take two turrets for it. But when Khan goes down, there's nothing long as you can get back, and they're going to have to see this inhibitor. Just waltz in and take at Longju, forced to concede yet another objective, and we have done it. Gigabyte Marines are officially 10,000 gold ahead of Longju, looking to try and close out this game. I think it's going to be very difficult for Longju to pull off the SKT and find that miracle 5v5 because Gigabyte Marines, they're grouping up, they're sieging onto this top tower, and they're looking for another. Oh, what a stun! BDD! It's a huge chunk of damage, and that turret's dead. Archie moving forward, actually going to threaten prey. Yeah, that Frozen Mallet not really hurting Archie too much. It doesn't even seem to damage him. It's another two-man taunt. Prey forced to attack him with his cards. Also stunned up the ultimate. Leverage there, but Gorilla tries to find the chain combo of it again. Noe with a zillion ultimate. Just letting it rip. Redemption down. Saves the back oh, end. Oh. The card. Respawn might save the other end of it. BDD kills to Optimus. Archie's going to go down. It's a clean ace. Oh, an ace. What a play. They'll find the ace. Levi respawns to the GM, but that's not enough. Yep. Completely clean ace there for Longju. The Zillion ultimate, I believe, went down onto the wrong carry. Optimus was the low health one, but let's take another look at the engage. Great. I thought that he was doing absolutely no damage in this spot. I was thinking that this was going to be the end for Longju, but a great ultimate from Kuz. The ulti does go down onto Zaya, but it wears off. He doesn't die in time, but once it's down, Khan sees his opportunity. He gets himself the kill, and BDD, he just wreaks havoc on the back line. Oh. Longju stand tall when it really matters here. They still have two inhibitors down, though. So this 
team fight victory, that clean ace, is just going to be used to buy themselves some time and buy themselves maybe the Elder Dragon. Should be able to take this one considering everybody from a Gigabyte Marine is still dead due to the long death timers. I will be amazed if that is the fight that allows Longju back into the game. We saw it once on SK Telecom. I was just saying how it was unlikely going to happen, and then Longju go and do it anyway. Just when you doubt Gorilla, he shows off with the rest of his team in that fight. Elder Dragon over. They also got three drakes in this game, so that is a lot of Infernals plus a bonus ocean. Yeah, they bought themselves quite a lot of time here considering the power they just got. And there's not too much left on the field here for the Gigabyte Marines to take. What you'd really want to see is them to set up around this Baron. You have a minute and 30 seconds. So place plenty of wards here. They don't want to fight while long as you actually have this yeah. double Inferno powered three elemental Drake Elder Dragon buff on them. Uh, and they just kind of want to keep that vision. Actually. Maybe a surprise kill here would uh, go a long ways. A little bit risky, though. I think Longju are very smart in how they're showing respect. They should not face check, cuz. Please calm down. Yeah, uh, Gragas, you want to use your great the face check. Torlan did so much damage with the card to the Colossus. We are going to keep him alive. Libe does get out of the oh Tanner Corruption. Word. Here well, comes Archie. What's it? Flash door, fight two ultimates. Leaves in from it. He can't quite get the Sun's Redemption. He's going to reset the fight. A cast dives in and gets himself out. Galio Waterman is off to his force to cut away, but Archie wastes the heroic entrance. Great kiting there from Longshu, and Ooh. now they're on the chase. Optimus, big stun, but not enough, and somehow everybody lives. Oh my god, Khan saved that fight so, so well. Sayak using the ultimate onto the wrong person could have ended in disaster, but Khan immediately had to back out. All he was doing there was trying to buy time for his team. Archie getting a fantastic double man taunt off meant that they were instantly going to kill Prey, but that's when we saw the value of that Frozen Mallet. All that extra HP, the burst from Optimus wasn't quite enough, but then no way couldn't get close enough. Neither could Levi because of Khan's Valiant efforts. Ooh, this one is definitely tense, boys. The kiting there from Longju, really important. They stack shields onto Cuz, they get him out first. Then during the Galio ultimate, they wait just outside of the range and wait to try and chase. Here we go, though. Baron has arrived. And again, Longju keeping themselves in the game. They've cut this lead in half as Khan TPs in to try and force them off the Baron. Does make his way in and Gigabyte Marines decide it's not the time just yet. Gigabyte Marines still have the pressure advantage because they're the ones that took two of Longju's inhibitors. That means mid and top will automatically push and Longju have to go and send someone to deal with it. Khan just used his teleport and BDD is topside but has his ulti to join the fray in as soon as he can. His wave is pretty good, which means the Gigabyte Marines aren't gonna force it too hard right now. Yeah, you can see along to right now. Priority is vision around the Baron and transitioning between mid and top side to clear out those super minions. Here goes Gigabyte Marines though. Gonna try and make something happen, but long through there, Archie zooming in, gonna get a justice punch on the gorilla. Now Levi around the back line, gonna try to set that prey! The combo down on prey! Takes down Levi and now no way getting jumped on again. Feather storm through his car. Dives into the rest of the fight, Archie just trying to buy time, taunts in the trunk is lovely. Justice Punch is gonna miss though, I think it's an overcommit for Gigabyte Marines, and it's just the one kill. Khan trying to do his best to get back to base, they're gonna use the Rise ulti. Nice removement uh, over there <laughs> from uh, the Long Juice squad to get back inside the base for defense, but Baron still stands. But they've lost their jungler, which is so crucial for the Gigabyte Marines. If they decide to commit to this, there's the risk of a steal, and no. Cuz is still hanging around. He's waiting for the potential steal. Don't know why he used his Q in the back <laughs> in the brush, but regardless, Longju, they continue to hold on. And it just feels so tough. Khan doing such a great job just tying up the carries. And you look down at nowhere, you see a hex drinker there in the infantry build. That cost as much as a last whisper, and he didn't buy one. Longju started up. Here we go. Levi still dead in the base. All right, well, looks like they're going to have to make something happen. Redemption going to give them a touch of vision, but that Baron is dead. Secured by Cuz in this fight, and Longju are fighting their way back. Longju, they get pushed all the way back into their base. They lose two inhibitors, and still they're finding ways back into the game. You can never take these Korean teams out of the game. You try so hard, but they always come back fighting. And while the Gigabyte Marines, they are still well within their power to win this game, Longju have figured out how to play these fights. Longju have been slowly keeping track of Levi, making sure that he is not killing their main carry in Prey. And no, Prey has only died once this whole game. Well, he's got a Guardian Angel built now as well. Oh so my it's going to take two more to put another one in that death column. No way, though, did change his mind. Now has a full Lord Dominic's regards built. So this team fight could look a lot better. 
Giga My Marines might have to rethink the way they're approaching these team fights because Long have been cutting so well. And they're very happy uh, to turn the tables there on the re engage. Turret number one goes down. Yep, the casual 40 minute mid out of turret. Long Jew, though, do collect it in the end. And this game is effectively even now. We have to reset. It's going to come down to these big late game fights. No way. Still going to be doing so much more damage than Prey. But it feels like the Longju have better found ways of getting rid of this front line from the Gigabyte Marines. Yeah, if he can stay safe, he'll be able to keep up those DPS numbers. But Longju, with the extra Infernal Drake in their pocket as well, it, they, they seem so much more confident now. Double inhibitors have respawned, and they're trying to retake control of the map. And again. So much tension in this game. Even Longju with the Baron buff aren't poking their heads out too far forward here. Have to know that again, for Adam Syndra and pretty much a full build, Rengar can assassinate you if you do not stick together. So Longju, they've had to play great defense all game long and it's got them this far. Yeah, I think the, the easiest targets here for Gigabyte Marines to go after would be Gorilla and VDD. Uh, because Prey, as we've been over, has actually gone fairly tanky with this build, VDD doesn't actually have a zone yet. And uh, Gorilla, we've seen him get 100%ed fairly often here, so they might want to change those targets. Longju, though, they're very happy to stay safe with each of them. They still have a minute left on the Baron buff, and they're going to use this to pick up some of the standing gold that is around the map. Remember that just a second ago, the, the tower difference was 8-1 to one in favor of the Gigabyte Marines. Longju can now pick up some of that extra bit of gold, and the game is pretty much dead even right now. I'm really excited to see how both teams react to, I mean, to, to the next few stages. Once Khan takes this, we are going to even it pretty much right back up. In fact, Longju will just barely take a gold lead as they have crawled themselves all the way back from 10,000 gold. And Longju also move everybody else out of the jungle and now actually continuing the siege. Gam for straight back to base. They're going to go down here as well. And Longju get to go back to base, reset. Get a little bit more vision and try and set up here. Next thing that's going to be on the board will be the Elder Dragon. I don't know if that's even going to have time to spawn. Both is, of them going to get back out into the Fog of War. Is that 10 minute uh, death timer on the Elder Drake for the time being? Things just going to slow down. Vision's still going to be a big point of focus for both teams. Now you have to realize that once everyone's completing full build, there's less space for control wards. So as you get later into the game, all that vision that was set up earlier starts to drop as BDD's in trouble. Oh, no BDD, a good early flash, but the blue buff does go. But Optimus comes though, finds the knockoff. Optimus gets out for Gorilla, finds the knockoff onto Zaya Norway. On the other side, Benetton's out from under Khan. The carries need to try and fight it out here, but a great position in for Longju. Norway still letting the damage rip, though, doing quite a lot. But Zaya does go down. Gorilla is going to fall. A stun lands in on the prey, but he did take out the Zillion Optimus. Oh, Prey! It happens, Prey, though, finds the pick, card grabs the knockoff, and that's the kill. Long shoot. I think they've just barely done it. Oh, my goodness. Archie's going to go down as well. BDD, though. Uh, last tick, not enough. Winds of War will not take down the rise. Prey, unbelievable decision right at the last moment. Yes, he had his GA, but he flashed over the wall, commits the killing, no way. And because the carry goes down, they're able to win the fight. Longju coming up so big, and they may finally be able to get themselves an inhibitor. Well, they're going to take down this turret by the looks of things. Archie teleported out of the bot lane to be back in the base, but it is not enough to protect this inhib. Likely enough to protect their base. Longju going to take this. Push another wave and probably walk away. I've just been told that this is, in fact, assuming Longju win, the biggest comeback of Worlds so far. Such an impressive performance to hold the line. Gigabyte Marines had everything going so well for them, but it was that final fight, and this may have been the decider. Let's take another look at this one. BDD flashes early. His Seraphs is gone early. Those are a lot of his defensive cooldowns, but then Optimus flashes out. He actually takes this Blast Cone into Khan, and then they rely on the Galio ultimate on the backside, while Zillion up here had to use his ultimate on himself. But keep your eyes on Prey in the fight. He's consistently dealing down along with Noe. They're both trying to get through, and then Prey makes the decision to flash oh. over. He then takes out Optimus, walks away. I mean, spoke earlier, but still taking out one of the big carries was so significant that because they had no this front line had nothing left to rely on behind them. Yeah, that defense going a long ways there for AD carries nowadays. It's really proving useful to fit one or two, especially half items, into the build. 
And now Soldi's boots and has a Phantom Dancer. So going to be just a touch tanky and do quite a bit more damage because Prey knows this game has already gone late. Like they have to win tremendously long team fights. Now Gigabyte Marines, the next best hope for them is the Elder Dragon is going to be spawning in about 30 seconds. The Baron's going to be spawning in about a minute. Perhaps they can go for a trade of objectives. Maybe they can take one for the other. Or they try and catch Longju unawares as they're setting up for that objective. But as we've seen so far, Longju have just been winning every single fight past the 30 minute mark it could all change if the gigabyte marines were able to find bdd early yeah he has no flash he has no plan no zonias still has no zonias but this is going to be it the elder dragon has arrived and again nice little trinket there spotting gam trying to approach from that tribush drag dragon has been started they're actually going to show Zai in mid lane, so not sure if Gigabyte Marines are even going to fight this one. He's clearing out the minions now. He still could traverse. Just waiting a long time here. A lot of damage actually on the Khan over the wall. So long do you think better of continuing to engage on this Elder Dragon. It's pretty tanking, doing a lot of damage. That was a pretty good exchange there for the Marines. They were able to clear out that super minion wave, plus the big chunk onto the front line you talked about. Means that Longju have to rethink things. They're starting back up, though. No way has now arrived. The entire lineup of Gigabyte Marines are here, ready and waiting. Every ultimate is up. Are they opting into a smite fight here? They let the Elder Dragon respawn. This is super minions, remember, going into the Gigabyte Marines base. So Longju are happy the to let Oh, they're actually gonna move, but it's only one gorilla. I just took it. What? They can't see him though. It's still safe for a little while longer, but the dragon still going Bye down. Levi, oh, he's now gonna spot gorilla. That could prompt it. 4,000 HP on the dragon. They it resets reset. again. They want to go in, I think, but they couldn't quite find the angle. Still tanking it for as long as they can, and Khan finally dives in. Taunt gets no way off his back, but Khan has so much health. Levi into the back line, tries to dive on the prey, but it's the time to speed it. He takes him down. Archie leaps into the back of the fight, but Longshu just kiting. Keep your eyes on Kuz. I was trying to make his way back in there, but the dragon's still getting low. Who's going to get it? No one yet, but Archie respawns and dies again. Longshu with yet another team fight. A lot better coordination there from Longju in this team fight. Levi was on the other side of the rest of the team. He goes in one versus four as the, less, the rest of Gigabyte Marines had backed off. Instantly gets blown up, even through the Gallia ultimate. And then it's pretty easy work there for Longju to work their way through. Exactly that, Kobe. They just recognized the positioning of the Gigabyte Marines. They knew they could force an advantageous fight. Now they have five members. They have the other Drake, and they're looking to get the biggest comeback of Worlds so far. Oh, he's just owning no women. Now he initiates Gorilla. Finds a knockup there as well, but Saya has the ultimate after this. He's going to get taken down by BDD, and the Nexus is now exposed. No way goes down, and Longju are going to chase their final necessary kill of the game. It was just too good to be true. Longju find their way back in. What an impressive performance in the comeback from Longju. Gigabyte Marines had them on the ropes. They stand tall with that base defense, that team fight in the top side. And we have to congratulate Longju for being the first team to make it into the quarterfinals of Worlds 2017. What an amazing comeback. What an amazing base defense. I didn't think they could do it, but they find the opportunity and they're able to shut down the Gigabyte Marines. When you think of the advantage that Gigabyte Marines had, that game went 48 minutes. And that one fight just kept them in the game and winning every subsequent fight after that just shows how talented this team is. But cannot discredit their opponents. Gigabyte Marines also made, almost made world's history oh, by did. upsetting Long Ju. And that performance is Almost good enough. Unfortunately, it's not quite. I feel like the Gigabyte Marines really have made history after the last two weeks of their performance. The fact that they were able to challenge Longju better than any other team in the group when no one really expected them to do so has just been so impressive. And it's just no way is really the play you had to watch that game because so many great AD carries have come from that region and he is no exception. I mean, yeah, Gigabyte Marines, even though they lose this game, they still have a good chance of getting out of this oh, yeah. group. So definitely all eyes are still going to be on them. Well, certainly a strong performance there as Longju managed to pull off the comeback, but to break down that game, let's head over to Dash and the analysts. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. Longju came into this game saying, we're not going to lose to Kane. We're not going to lose to Urgot. We're not going to lose to the Nocturne. We're not going to lose to the Graves Jungle. What else you got for us here? And Gigabytes responds with the Rengar 
Zillion. Talk to me about these pictures. The stars. Marines are the greatest thing to happen to modern League of Legends. <laughs> like, these guys are actually shaking up everything. Since 2013, everyone's copying Korea. What have they got? Do these guys even watch LCK at this point? Because they just bring their own game, and they're relentless, and almost beat the number one Korean seed. And it's beautiful when it actually makes sense, too, right? When you see some of the lane swaps against Longju last time, it was not very inspiring. This time around, their composition made a lot of sense. It was aggressive. It fit their play style. And it also played into some of the tendencies that, that Longju has, right? They like to play with a DPS-style top laner. They like to play this kind of one-punch style where you jump in with the Jarvan, you instantly kill someone off, and Zillion answers that so incredibly well. Yeah, exactly. I think Zillion is like the MVP pick of the draft because everything they've given over to Longju is single-target damage. And obviously, when you have single-target damage, Zillion ult will counter that and make the front line super effective. So when you have Twitch ban, Trist ban, and Kog'Maw ban, like, all the big hyper carries are gone, and Prey's sitting on a champion that all, as virus they can just sit and hit one target, one target, one target, and that's where the Zillion ult is so key, and what's key. Yeah, it, well, it definitely was through the mid-game again. We saw Gigabytes extend about a 10k gold lead, but it was mentioned by the casters, the biggest comeback at Worlds as of yet. We saw SKT come back from 9k, Longzu wants to do one better, comes back from 10, and it all happened in the base defense of all things. This was, of course, we've got Longzu defending against uh, the Gigabyte Marines in the base. This will be your Acer replay. So what is important to note here is Cuz on his cast for Longju because he's just looking, he doesn't get hit by the stun, and while he flashes out, he still has his ultimate available. Optimus thinks he's gonna come hit, but the ultimate knocks both carries into the team, and that prompts Zillion to ult the AD carry to try to save him. Fortunately, it was Optimus that needed to be saved. Longju capitalized, and they make a great defense. This was also one of the first times where Longju managed to kind of split up all of uh Gigabyte Marines, because every fight before this would be like Archie in the front, and then Levi coming in with him, and all Longshu could do was kind of hit those two guys, so that it was very easy for Zillion to be like, plop, ult, and this guy is about to die, no problem. This one, they got completely split up, and maybe panic? Like, oh, my AD carries in there, ult him instantly. Yeah, and Zia did have some mistakes, I think, with the ultimates in the later stages of the game, but also a lot of credit over to Longshu for, you know, improving on how they're playing the fights throughout the game, and also I think that Prate's build actually made a lot of sense here, yeah. going very defensive with the GA, with the Wits End, with the Frozen Mallet, giving him the ability on top of the Lockets and the, and the Redemption and everything coming down to actually be able to survive the Rengar Burst. And we saw Levi become less and less effective throughout the game with these Rengar Ultimates. Time and time again in the late stages of the fights, he was dying through that Galio ult. Yeah, just like Gigabyte Marines comp is like super like shotgun style, where you jump in, all your ultis are being used straight away more or less, and if you win the fight there, perfect. If you don't actually kill someone instantly, Zillion ulti comes down, the guy obviously comes back to life. Well, Zillion is now pretty much useless in, in this point. So is Rengar without the ulti, so is Galio without the ulti, and that's where Longtooth Comp will take over. So once they got all the defensive tools, they didn't really lose fights. In-game adaptation for Long Zoo was key, and I feel like the final fight was a perfect example of what you're talking about, Azale. The itemization kind of allowing Long Zoo to outlast the burst damage of Gigabyte Marines, on top of the fact that now that the game is in a more even state, we see how difficult it is for Gigabyte Marines to execute their comp aggressively. And Longju had almost shut this down before it even started because of their good warding. They saw when Rengar popped the ultimate, they are able to collapse and begin the fight with Optimus split off to the side. With Levi trying to come in from behind, it weren't all on the same page. Well, that's what happens when you have that shotgun composition. You actually do get outscaled. You saw the HP bars of every member of Longju. They recognized what they had to do. Survivability was key. You don't need to stack up damage. Just group up together. Expect the engage and you defend it. And it just shows that this is a world-class team that even against the Marines with the coordination, with the composition that is designated to just kill prey, <laughs> they still knew what to do. And again, that's also with losing Urgot, Kane, the Nocturne, as you mentioned earlier. So if you're a fanatic now and you're watching these games and you have to prepare for Gigabyte Marines, do you try to launch a strat and just like ban out target picks? Or is it like, there's too many? No, there's too many. I think that's one of the most impressive things about Gigabytes is they're one of the few teams that has come into Worlds not with just one or two outside the meta picks, yeah. but with five to 10 to 12 outside the meta picks so that it is impossible to react entirely in the ban phase. And I'd even say if, if Gigabyte Marines is playing this well, 
you can ban out all these all these target picks. They might just be able to beat Fnatic straight up. Well, let's take a look at what this does to the group as we pull up the standings. Longzhu, of course, has locked in that first seed for Group B, but this means that Fnatic is still in the race for second. They do have to beat the Gigabyte, Marine, Gigabyte Marines, though. Yeah, and then, of course, Immortals need to lose to Longzhu as well, and you have that three-way tiebreaker where we still don't know who's going to make it out, but uh, still... Gigabyte Marines, Fnatic. Right now, Gigabyte Marines will be the favorites. I was about to say, do you even think that Fnatic can take down Gigabytes the way that they're playing right now? I don't think so, because you heard in Reckless's interview, they didn't even consider the opportunity of beating Longju. They just thought, out, well, we'll warm up for Immortals. Gigabyte Marines thought, yeah, we can take Longju. <laughs> we can take anybody in this group. And that mentality shift is already enough for me to say that the Marines will be a heavy favorite in this. Things continue to heat up here. Long to secure the first seed in Group B. It's time to send it over to Shox, who's ready with their AD carry. Thank you very much, guys. Joined here by Prey from Longju. After that very impressive turnaround, the biggest comeback in Worlds so far. It looked like you guys really found a moment in the game where you adjusted the way you approached the team fights. Uh, is that the case? When was that exactly? And what did you change in order to beat uh, the Marines here? 그 프레이 선수 정말 인상 깊은 역전극이었는데요. 이제 그 경기 진행 도중에 그 기가발 마린 팀의 한타를 한타에 대해 좀 적응하고 다시 좀 이걸 뒤집는 경기를 보여주셨는데 정확히 어떤 점부터 경기를 그렇게 역전할 수 있었다 생각하시나요? 어 일단 상대의 좀 노림수 같은 거에 초반에 많이 말려서 일단 게임 자체가 많이 힘들었는데 그래도 이제 그러니까 좀 <웃음> 한타를 되게 잘한다는 부심 같은 게 있거든요. 그래가지고 아, 싸움을 되게 잘해서 이겨보자 계속 이런 마인드로 해서 좀 어떻게 한타 되게 좋게 좋게 풀어가지고 역전하게 된것 같아요. Uh, actually, we had a lot of difficulties playing against Gigabit Marines early strategic moves, and but we had a lot of pride in our own team fighting skills. So we just said we can keep on fighting, and eventually we would hopefully. Uh, turn the tables around. And that happened. That also means that you guys lock first seed going into quarterfinals. You guys are, of course, the LCK champions. Do you feel like you've played to the level of the LCK champions so far? And what do you feel uh, about your performance so far going into quarterfinals? 이번 경기를 이김으로써 이제 그조 1위로 8강 진출 확정지였는데요. LCK 첫 번째 시드로서 LCK 결승전 경기력을 다시 회복해서 이제 하셨다 생각하시는지 지금까지 롱주 팀의 경기를 좀 어떻게 평가하시나요? 어 좀. 네. 저희가 살짝 뭐 휘청거렸던 것도 사실이지만 그만큼 상대 팀이 강했다고 생각을 하고요. 뭐 저희는 계속 조금씩 발전하고 있기 때문에 그때 결승보다 계속 좋은 경기력 보여주려고 노력하고 있습니다. It is true that we did stumble in the meantime, but I think that's because the opponents were that strong. Mm -hmm. But I think we're still improving as we go on, and not only will we recover our uh, performance as we did in LSK Finals, but we'll actually play better, hopefully, in the future stages. All right, we will see what happens uh, up next. But I saw you guys earlier watching the games. You guys were very, very happy when Fnatic ended up beating Immortals because it, of course, made your chances for first place easier. We saw Fnatic being very happy now because there's still a three-way tie possible. So tell me, Prey, who do you think is going to get out of the group with you guys. 이제 프라틱 팀이 이전에 이모탈즈 팀을 이겼을 때 되게 기뻐하는 모습을 봤는데요. 또 지금도 이제 롱주 팀이 그 기가의 말 팀이 이겼었을 때 프라틱 팀이 뒤에서 매우 기뻐했는데 이제 재경기 남아 있는 상황에서 프레이 선수는 누, 어느 팀이 2위로 8강에 진출할 수 있을까 생각하시나요? 어, 일단 어느 팀이 2위로 올라온다기보다는 <웃음> 저희가 프라틱이 올라오길 바랬던 거는 그러니까 약간 계속 극적인 드라마 같은 걸좀 쓰는 걸 되게 좋아해서 프라틱이 되게 안 좋게 안 좋은 성적으로 시작했잖아요. 그래가지고 프라틱이 이겨서 이제 우리가 기가바이트를 이겨주면은 프라틱이 또 기회가 생기고 뭐 프라틱이 또 이기면 또 올라갈 수 있는 좀 그런 기회를 만들어주고 싶어서 저희가 되게 프라틱이 많이 응원했던 것 같아요. So it's really hard to say who will who will actually be the better team to go to the quarterfinals, but we love drama. <laughs> and we just thought that if Fnatic beats Immortals and if we beat Longzhu, I mean if we beat um, Gigabyte mm -hmm. Marines and Immortals, then we give Fnatic a, a, a second chance. And considering that they had such a uh, hard performance in week one, just think it's going to be really interesting if they get that second chance to go to the quarterfinals. All right, it would be very dramatic indeed, but congratulations, Prey, on getting that first seed going into quarterfinals. And that all important match of Fnatic versus the Marines is coming up after the break, so don't go anywhere. Gamergy to get invaded, Gorilla knocks one up, and that can be first blood later! Oh no, in trouble, and first blood over to Prey! Khan looking for the Cataclysm, who's he gonna find? Jumps in, finds a couple Featherstone Flash out, but Zaya is trapped in the mix and goes down to Cuz. No way, still landing round! Oh my god, the damage! King of Ivory! Okay. 